Only four years ago, Derby County were just 90 minutes away from the Premier League, but now they find themselves mid-table in League One. What happened to the Rams? From breaking their transfer record four times in four years to not being able to sign a single player, the downfall of Derby County was tragic and fast. The downfall really started at 16.54 on the 27th of May 2019. Full time in the playoff final meant that Derby's big gamble had not paid off. The 2020 season looked like an okay one on paper, but Derby was seriously in danger of relegation for the first half of the year. Seven wins from their first 23 games was boosted by 10 wins from their last 23, moving them from 17th all the way up to 10th. This improvement wasn't to last long though. Derby County broke their transfer record every single Single season from 2015 to 2019, so everyone was surprised when they only spent money on a single player before the start of the 2020 to 21 season. Forget signings though, the biggest news came when the EFL announced they would not be docking them any points for selling their stadium to themselves. Once again, this season started off in a terrible way. Derby would get a 1 0 win in game week 4 against high flying Norwich City, but wouldn't win again until game week 16 in December. In fact, Derby would only manage 4 wins in the first 23 games of the season. Former PSV and Fenerbahce manager Philip Koku was sacked, and he was replaced by Wayne Rooney, who was apparently leading some of the dressing room unrest before Koku's departure. Rumours of a Saudi Arabian takeover from Khalifa bin Zayed continued in the background, but things went from bad to embarrassing in early January, where several players contracted Covid and Derby were forced to play an under-18 squad against Chorley in the FA Cup. After losing 2-0 to a 6th division side, it was clear to the world just how bad things were at Derby County. Only a week later, it was shown that the players hadn't been paid last month's wage and the takeover was still not progressing. In the space of 18 months, Derby County had gone from the playoff finals to losing to Chorley and suddenly the entire world could see Derby were in a death spiral. Things weren't all bad for Derby on the pitch though. In the 18 games since Wayne Rooney had taken over as manager, he had managed to win 31 points from the maximum of 54, leading his side from last in the table to 6 points clear of relegation. Form at Derby slowly slipped though for the rest of the season. Derby entered May 4 points behind 20th place Huddersfield and 4 points clear of the relegation zone. The Saudi saviour Khalifa bin Zayed's takeover bid had already collapsed and the Spanish saviour Eric Alonso was also looking likely to not buy the club, so all hope for Derby meant they had to go into survival Saturday on the last game of the season and try and stay in the championship. Playing against Sheffield Wednesday, another team that was in the relegation zone, with 15 minutes left to play in the game week, Derby were in 23rd position. With just 10 minutes to go, one of the craziest minutes in the championship ever happened. Firstly, Derby County were awarded a penalty. 30 seconds later, at the same time in Cardiff, Cardiff equalised against Rotherham to make the game 1-1. This meant if Derby could score their penalty 30 seconds later, they would be outside of the relegation zone. Martin Waghorn stepped up and scored, meaning Derby would survive for at least one more season. But this is where the real downfall begins. After starting fairly well, including being 6 points ahead of eventual playoff winners Nottingham Forest, Wayne Rooney's side were handed a 12 point deduction for entering administration. As Derby struggled to overcome this first deduction, they were then handed a further 9 point deduction for breaching EFL accounting rules. This 21 point deduction of course sent Derby to the bottom of the championship table. It wasn't a surprise for Derby to receive either of these two points penalties, with rumours of the second deduction spoiling for 18 months and the first being a standard EFL rule. In fact, at one point it looked like 21 points could only be the beginning. Derby had another 15 point deduction hanging over them if they didn't manage to pay 25% of their debt following any takeover deals. Derby were to play out the rest of the 2021 to 2022 season with the risk of liquidation, which happens to clubs who can't afford to pay their debts. Derby quickly got themselves into positive numbers when it comes to on the field points and started to believe that a remarkable survival bid could be completed at one stage as the likes of Barnsley, Peterborough United and Reading struggled to find any real kind of form. The Christmas period was one of the most important for Derby's season. After 21 games had played, Derby County was sat on just a single point. Over the next 5 games, they played Blackpool, won 1-0, they played West Bromwich Albion, won 1-0, they played Stoke City, 
1-2-1. They played fellow relegation rivals Reading and they got a 2-2 draw. And then they beat playoff contenders Sheffield United 2-0. These 13 points from 5 games saw Derby match Barnsley's 14 points and they moved off the bottom of the table. Derby had a hugely better goal difference after this many games and they were only really at the bottom because of this points deduction. Suddenly, Derby County were only 8 points away from 21st place Reading, a position that would see them survive. With results improving, the administrators in charge of the Rams decided it would be prudent to keep some of their top talents for at least another 6 months. A large amount of the squad was still on good wages, but many of them had contracts that would expire in the summer transfer window. Bids came in for players Lee Buchanan, Jason Knight, Festi Ebiselli and Luke Plange, and Luke Plange was the only one who would leave the club when he eventually left for Crystal Palace before returning on loan. This gamble saw Derby seriously risking their long-term future. The value of staying in the championship to potential owners was judged to be higher than the transfer value of their entire squad, but if Derby did struggle and managed to get relegated, they would seriously need an owner and ASAP or their entire existence would be at risk. Risk. As plaudits rained down on Rooney for this run of form and the Rams clung on to their January glimmer of hope, a few results here and there kept Derby almost within touching distance of safety, but all hope was extinguished when relegation was confirmed on the back of a 1-0 defeat at QPR on the 18th of April. The 21 point deduction deficit was the reason that Derby were ultimately relegated. Without the deduction, despite having a very weak squad, Derby would have finished in 17th place with 55 points in mid-table. Instead, they finished in 23rd place on 31 points. The gamble to keep their best young players had failed and Derby almost looked certain to become a former football team. Cryptocurrency clown Chris Kirkner teased ownership of the club until it became clear he didn't have the funds or the know-how to buy a team at this level. Even comparing Derbyshire to Kentucky, Kirkner became a laughingstock for most championship fans. Next followed a half-hearted buyout option from Mike Ashley. It's unclear how interested he was in buying the Rams, but again, this buyout failed. Eventually, Derby-based business Klaus Developments entered talks, and within two weeks, the owner David Klaus owned the stadium and the football club, finally reuniting the two and providing some level of security to a former English giant. And that's basically how this story ends. David Klaus seems to have stopped the downfall, with Derby looking set for a top half finish in League One. Rooney would go on to abandon Derby to manage DC United in the MLS, a decision that eventually saw the city backtrack on some of the honours it had planned to give him. But how will the 2022 season finish? Will Derby stabilise and be in the Premier League again in a few years? Those are two questions we'll all have to wait and see. But thank you for watching, please subscribe and let me know any teams you'd like to see a mini documentary like this on. Thank you for watching, I'll see you soon, cheers and goodbye.